With the seventh overall pick in the 2010 MLB draft, the New York Mets would select Matt Harvey, a six foot four, 210 pound right handed pitcher, and his professional career would begin the next year in 2011, pitching so well in the minor leagues to the point where he was ranked as the Mets' second best prospect and the 34th best prospect in all of baseball being invited to spring training with the big league team. And although he did not make the team, injuries on the Mets and struggles in the starting rotation would eventually lead Mets general manager Sandy Alderson to make the big decision to call Harvey up to the big leagues. And he did not disappoint, striking out 11 hitters in his big league debut, going on to finish the 2012 season in the Mets rotation, throwing just under 60 innings with a 2.73 ERA and 10 starts. And then came 2013. 2013 was the year of Matt Harvey in Queens. He became a legend there, getting comparisons to greats like Justin Verlander and Kurt Schilling. Former Mets manager Bobby Valentine claimed he felt Harvey could end up quote unquote being the best Met pitcher to ever wear the uniform, with former Met player Dwight Gooden calling him the real deal. And when Harvey took the mound at City Field in New York, the park was buzzing. On one particular night, April 19th of 2013, Harvey started a game against the Washington Nationals, and who would be pitching for the opposing Nats? None other than Steven Strasburg, their young phenom starting pitcher. So it was one young highly touted starter versus another, and Harvey showed up that night, allowing just one run while striking out seven. As for Strasburg on the other end, he didn't have the best night, and in the bottom of the sixth inning with the Mets up 4 to nothing, with Strasburg still on the mound, Mets fans started to let him hear it, chanting, Harvey's better. As you're hearing this chant right now, it's Harvey's better. Pretty creative. I want to know how they came up with wow. that and transmit. Kids were holding up signs that said Harvey for president. I mean, things were looking really promising and electric for the future of Mets baseball. I mean, the dude was out here even pitching with a bloody nose and doing damn well, taking a perfect game into the seventh inning against the White Sox, going on to pitch nine innings in an eventual 10-inning win for the Mets. Just a couple weeks later, Harvey, who just continued to dominate on the mound, was put on the cover of Sports Illustrated and called the Dark Knight of Gotham. Do you have good and durable earbuds for an affordable price? Well, if you don't have Raycon earbuds, you probably don't have the best earbuds you can get. Thanks to Raycon, you're paying half the price for the same, if not better quality, earbuds. You can get a pair and a spare, and still pay less than you would with some of these other, more big name tech brands out there. They also have some awesome bonus features like awareness mode, tap function, and more. Speaking from experience, I absolutely love Raycon earbuds. I use them every day. They work well, are convenient, and are just an all-around great deal and you can get a pair of your very own if you click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com italk to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Once again, click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com italk to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. You'll be getting a great deal for great earbuds while also helping out the channel. Now back to the video. Harvey would eventually get the honors to start the All-Star game, which was at City Field, and he just continued right where he left off once the second half of the season began. But in late August, some bad news came around, which was the fact that Harvey was diagnosed with a partial tear in his right elbow. Not the kind of thing you want to hear from a pitcher, and the news only got worse. Harvey's electric season would have to end there, and although he did at one point say he would try to rehab the elbow instead of surgery, October came around and Matt and the Mets had no other choice than to opt for Tommy John surgery, which of course would knock him out for all of the next season. 2014. The 2013 season, although it ended in a terrible way, was incredible for Harvey and a sign of great things to come once he was healthy again, as he'd finish fourth in the National League Cy Young voting. As much as Harvey wanted to make his return in 2014, the Mets decided it was best he slow everything down, especially since the Mets were not going to make the postseason anyway. There was just no point in Harvey making a risky return in meaningless games. So the baseball world would have to wait until 2015 for the next Harvey day. And on April 9th, it arrived, as he'd give up no runs while striking out nine against the Nationals in his return, and after the game, Bryce Harper gushed over Harvey and how good he was, saying that he's going to win a Cy Young one day, everyone knows that, and that he is one of the toughest at-bats he's ever had. And a little less than a month later, as if Harvey could use any more praise from people, Hall of Famer Pedro Martinez chimed in, saying that he believed Matt Harvey could end up having a better career than his own, adding on that he believes he has more talent than he himself did. 
There was, of course, talk of limiting Harvey's innings throughout the season due to having to keep him healthy, but he was able to finish the 2015 season throwing just under 190 innings with a 2.71 ERA, striking out 188 hitters. He was incredible, and as for the Mets as a team, they were pretty good too, winning 90 games and going all the way to the World Series in large part because of Harvey's contributions. In four starts that October, Harvey threw 26 and two-thirds innings with an ERA right around three, and against the Royals in a decisive must-win Game 5 of the World Series at home, Harvey showed up, throwing eight innings, giving up zero runs, and striking out a ton of hitters. And as he walked off the mound after his eighth inning and the Mets up two to nothing, you would be a fool to assume he wouldn't pitch the night. And so Harvey ran back out there for the ninth inning at over 100 pitches thrown and the Mets just three outs away from forcing the series back to Kansas City. Unfortunately, it did not end the way Harvey or the Mets wanted or expected, with the Royals coming back to force extra innings, winning it all in extras as Harvey would fail to get an out in the ninth. A heartbreaking way to end such a fun season for the Mets, and little did anyone know at the time, but this was the beginning of the end for the Dark Knight, aka Matt Harvey, as we knew it. 2016 was not a fun year for Harvey, with him pitching poorly and midway through the season, having to get season-ending surgery for his shoulder as the Mets missed the postseason. As for 2017, things started to really go downhill for Harvey. He'd start off the year well in his first four starts, looking like the Matt Harvey we all know and love, but then the struggles came on and off the field. In early May, Harvey was suspended by the Mets for three games because he did not show up to the ballpark one day and was found to have been out late partying the night prior with Mets officials having to go over to Harvey's apartment to check on him. After pitching to an ERA over five on the year up until mid-June, Harvey then had to get another surgery that would force him out for the next few months before he returned in September, only to pitch worse than ever before finishing the 2017 season with a 6.70 ERA, and in 2018, Harvey wasted no time to struggle on the mound, pitching to an ERA right at 6 in his first four starts, forcing the Mets to make the decision to move him to the bullpen, and he wasn't good there either, giving up two hits and a run in two innings in his first relief appearance, being so angry that he refused to talk to the media after the game. And on May 4th of 2018, exactly three years after Pedro Martinez praised Harvey and said he believes he can have a better career than he ever did, the Mets designated Harvey for assignment after they tried sending him down to the minor leagues only for Harvey to refuse, getting traded a few days later to the Cincinnati Reds. And just like that, his Mets career was over, at least for now. As a Red, Harvey wasn't actually terrible, although he wasn't anything close to his early Mets days, but that still earned him a one-year $11 million deal with the Angels for 2019, only to not be able to last the entirety of the season due to being terrible along with an upper back strain, eventually getting released by the team in late July after pitching to an ERA over 7 with the Angels. A few weeks later, Harvey would sign a minor league deal with Oakland, becoming a free agent after the 2019 season, where he would then sign a minor league contract with the Royals, appearing in 7 games for them in 2020, pitching to an ERA over 11.5. I mean, at this point, it was just ugly for Harvey. There's no sugarcoating it. It was ugly by the time his Mets tenure was nearing its end, but now he still couldn't figure it out after being through four more organizations. Harvey still held on to that hope though, getting picked up on another minor league deal, this time with the Orioles for 2021, and what followed was yet another abysmal time on the mound. He'd finished the 2021 season with an ERA over 6 and 28 starts made for the O's, becoming a free agent yet again before the Orioles decided to sign him to another minor league deal for 2022. But in May of that same year, just about a month after re-signing with Baltimore, Harvey was suspended by Major League Baseball for 60 games for being linked to the tragic death and overdose of Angels pitcher Tyler Skaggs. In February of 2022, Matt Harvey agreed to testify in court in exchange for immunity, going on to admit that he not only just helped give Skaggs Percocet pills that were found in his possession the day he died, but Harvey also admitted to using drugs himself throughout his career, including cocaine. Never have I ever tried cocaine. Okay, well, you know, like, I don't know. Okay, of course he has not touched drugs ever. Remember when I mentioned back in 2013 when Harvey was pitching with a bloody nose and did so well? 
He also had another nosebleed during a game in 2015 against the Dodgers. Well, now looking back, it's clear what was going on during those starts. When asked about Harvey and the whole drug situation, former Mets manager Terry Collins, the man who managed Harvey, said he wasn't surprised Harvey was doing drugs, saying that there were accusations going on in the clubhouse while he was there, but that there wasn't really any proof, and nothing was really done about it other than telling Harvey to clean up his off-the-field act. Soon after Harvey admitted to the drug use, radio host and personality Craig Carton shared a story on something that happened with Harvey that involved Carton himself. When a woman shared videos to Carton of Matt Harvey doing cocaine in his apartment, basically trying to blackmail Harvey, saying she wanted $100,000. According to Carton, the whole thing apparently just ended up going away, and he doesn't know if Harvey ended up writing a check to her or not, but it was just a pretty crazy situation all around, and one of the many reasons it starts to make sense why his career in New York and overall career went so downhill. Harvey would go on a pitch throughout the Orioles minor league system in 2022, and actually did fairly well, but of course not well enough to get called up to the big leagues, going on to become a free agent yet again in November, going on a pitch for Team Italy in the World Baseball Classic, and he actually did pretty well. In two starts, he'd go 1-0 with a 1.29 ERA, but what's clear is that Matt Harvey just doesn't have what it takes anymore to be a big league pitcher. In fact, he hasn't for many years, and as of just recently, Harvey officially called it quits, announcing his retirement from baseball. In his statement, one of the things said by Harvey was this, quote, Believe me, I wish I could have done more and brought more of those amazing moments back to life. I have to say this is my time to say thank you and goodbye. Adding on that the fans, most importantly Mets fans, will forever be embedded in his heart, finishing off by saying goodbye baseball and thank you. It's unfortunate to see how everything ended up turning out after all the high expectations, with Harvey turning out to have been a drug addict with many issues off the field, issues that impacted his play on the field, and made him never be the same pitcher again after 2015. And with that, Matt Harvey, the man praised by so many legends and once hailed as the Dark Knight of Gotham City, is no more.